Dealer Finance 101. Today we're sharing critical points you must know about dealer finance before you ever agree to a car loan at a car dealership. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Every viewer on the Homer Guy channel has come to rely on our team for spot on content for car buyers. Today's video is no exception. In fact, this video is so good, you should probably be sharing it across the entire planet. Today is Dealer Finance 101 and details about car loans at car dealers that you likely never knew until now. Elizabeth joins me today to share our top 10 tips for Dealer Finance 101. Elizabeth, take it away. All right, number one, let's start with cash buyers. Woo! Many of you have seen our video on why you shouldn't say I'm paying cash when you walk into a car dealership. The reason is simple. The the finance office literally can't stand cash buyers. Right. And any honest finance manager will tell you that's 100% true. The industry term in the finance office is known as product penetration. In car buyer terms, it's how much product they can succeed in packing into your car deal. When you're a cash buyer, you hurt their product penetration every single time. And the entire sales process is designed to stack the deck against you the moment you confess that you are a cash buyer. Don't forget that. <laughs> so watch our very popular video on cash buyers if you want more info on that. Number two, never believe any finance manager who tells you that a low interest rate is available, but only if you buy products they want you to have. No, 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 no. That is a bold faced lie. This claim violates compliance and agreements the dealer has with the lenders they use. Lies like this is one of the reasons your car contract could actually be canceled. So it's extremely important that you document this stuff. I recommend having an audio recorder with you, like in your purse or in a shirt pocket, and ask them to put those kinds of statements in writing when they make them. They won't, but that's when you know you're sitting across the desk from a crook. Number three. Never allow the finance manager to hold your car contract and direct your eyes to specific portions of it. You hold it. Yes, you hold it. Yep. Take your time reading through it. The reason the finance manager wants to hold it is he wants to, you to overlook critical things on the contract, which are designed to fleece you. Number four, ask questions about everything. Ask about arbitration contracts and things that could nullify your car contract. This will make the finance manager extremely uncomfortable, but... That's fine. You're there to protect yourself, so do it. Number five, never go into the finance office without a written and signed proposal from the sales floor from your salesman. It's the only proof of the agreement you made there, like the price of the car you're buying and the amount that you're getting for your trade-in if you're trading your car. Exactly. Number six, document fees, doc fees, or anything with a name close to it. It's total BS. Yes. You can follow our advice and offer a few bucks for it, like $75. I do that. Elizabeth does that. But don't pay any ridiculously high document fees. It's different in every state. So if you have questions about doc fees, look it up. Find out what the lowest and highest are that they're allowed to charge in your state. But see our video on 11 fake fees for several other fees you're likely encounter That's in a good dealer one. finance. Number seven, you do not have to buy any add-ons the dealer will put on your car to inflate the car price. On new cars, those add-ons should show up as an addendum to the window sticker. You can ask to have them removed. Exactly. Yep. And if the dealer tries to give you a hard time, ask for the number for the manufacturer. Talking to the regional rep for the manufacturer can actually be very productive. Mm -hmm. Tell them the dealer is trying to take more money from you for stuff that you don't want and complain about the dishonesty. You'll see the dealer suddenly get rid of that stuff real quick. Very fast. Any dealer who states every car gets it, so you have to take it, or it's a factory add-on, we can't control that, is telling you nothing but a lie, and you don't have to pay for it. A big, fat lie. Yep. Number eight, you must talk to your own bank or credit union first if you're planning on financing your car. Dealers are famous for bumping rates on car buyers who don't do their homework. On average, dealerships make 600 to 800 bucks just marking up the rate. On a really clueless buyer, they can make 1100 to 1500 on what is known as bank reserve. That's a high price for stupid, actually. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's easy to understand. The dealer banks send an offer of, let's say, 2.9%, which is the buy rate that you qualify for. However, the dealer finance man can mark it up as much as three points, turning it into 5.9%, which becomes the sell rate. When you don't know better, you're getting slammed on interest rates. By comparison, incentivized rates like 0% or super low manufacturer rates are often protected rates and the dealer gets a small flat fee of 150 bucks. That's much better than padding the dealer's pocket with a $1,500 interest rate bump. Number nine, if you do use dealer financing, ask to see the buy rate 
the approval sheet from the bank. Exactly. However, many of these banks have a custom review option, and if so, the finance manager will select that before you, they let you see the screen. And if you want to know this information and if it's accurate or not, tell them you'd like to talk to the banker before the loan is done. That will make them squirm. They will not like you talking Ooh. to their banker. Number 10, extended warranties, service plans, etc. If you are offered these products, the price you are quoted is already marked up $1,000 to $2,000. If you ask to see the cost, the finance manager will be showing you an already inflated number and then claim they have to mark that number up a few hundred dollars, you know, just to make a few bucks. Just well, few. that is a lie. You have to do your own homework if you want this stuff. Make sure you see our video on 10 products you can expect to be offered in dealer finance. No matter what the finance manager says, you don't have to buy any of this stuff. In fact, cramming product down your throat is illegal. Mm -hmm. When a finance manager does this to you, there's no faster way to get a contract nullified and they know it. All you have to do is call the bank and tell them the finance manager failed to disclose this stuff to you and they're in deep doo-doo. That's our top 10 for dealer finance 101 tips. So be aware of the fact that totally honest financial officers are out there in the dealerships and they exist, but there's just very few of them. Um, we get comments and feedback from these good guys and it's quite stunning how much they're willing to share with us. So check out this comment by a longtime finance officer on our cash video. As Kevin told him, this was the all time best comment by a viewer. All and time best comment. Yes, and he validates everything that we're sharing today. So unfortunately, the honest ones often quit or they get fired. So you're likely to get someone who absolutely will not have your best interest in mind. So no matter how many times they say, I just want to make sure you protect your investment. I want to make sure you protect your investment. <laughs> B <Yikes>. S. <laughs> One last thing. With every car contract, there's also a buyer's order. Also ask to see the buyer's order and compare it to the car contract. Banks require a buyer's order, so there'll always be one. Don't let them deny this. The disclosure of all the numbers is much more clear than your car contract and problems are easier to catch, so you definitely want to look at it. You must know what you're signing for. Yes. Finance managers don't really want you knowing what you're signing for, which is why they go so fast through everything and they point to things like Elizabeth mentioned that they want you to look at. They want you to think they're trying to be considerate of your time and being thorough while instead they're actually hiding stuff from you. Well, if you appreciated the video today on dealer finance, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below, include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on your favorite social media platforms out there. We're always expanding to other places. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But if you really want to help us get the word out, that's what we want you to do. Yeah. Share our content and encourage others to subscribe too. Help us get to that million subscriber mark. And by doing so, you're helping to bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with Elizabeth. Make sure you talk to your own bank or credit union first if you're financing. If you're ever thinking about doing that and you're out shopping for a car, thanks for joining us today.